Hey guys, today we're going to take a look at this Lion Energy 12.8 volt 105 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Now, a couple of months ago I did a review on a Roypow battery that seems to have magically vanished from the market after I published it. But a couple of people had said the battery casing that they used looked like the Lion Energy batteries. And I've heard quite a few good things about Lion Energy but have never tried one myself. So I reached out to the company who generously sent me this Safari UT1300 for the purposes of testing, reviewing, and sharing with you guys. Alright, so this battery weighs in at 23 pounds. It's a Group 24 battery, which means it's 10.2 inches in length, 6.6 .6 inches in width, and 8.8 .8 inches in height. On the top here, we can see two handles for lifting the battery. We have the main negative and the main positive post. Both of these posts thread out. So you can see there's a thread on the bottom, and there's also a thread inside of the post. On the left side we have a battery state of charge indicator, currently showing 80% state of charge. The top right we can see it's 12.8 volts, 105 amp hours, 1344 watt hours, and it's rated for 150 amps continuous discharge. On the right hand side you can see some additional specifications about the battery, pretty much what I had just read off already. Recommended charger setting is 14.6 volts at 45 amps for a standard charge. And on the left panel, we just have a little bit of information about the company themselves. Taking a look at the instruction manual here, you can see it does look very similar to the Roypow, but I noticed the Line Energy is proofread a little better than the other was. Here are the main specifications for the battery. It is 12.8 volt nominal. It's 105 amp hours with a minimum capacity of 104.5 amp hours. And like usual, you can only charge it above freezing. There's not many lithium iron phosphates that you can charge below freezing. Uh, and those that we do have typically have heaters and whatnot built in. It does support series and parallel connections. Uh, they ask that you don't connect more than four in series or a 48 volt system. Guessing that it has to do with the circuitry of the BMS itself. So when you connect your cables, you can use these large uh, terminals they provided here. Or they also included this bag of miscellaneous hardware. And this bag contains two different length wing nuts, so there's four wing nuts total. And there's some flat washers and some split lock washers as well. And you can thread these either into the top of these or you can remove this post altogether and thread it directly into the post itself. Uh, so like usual, I'm very interested to open this up and see what's inside and see how it's built. But before we do that, we want to do our capacity test on the off chance we accidentally damage something in the process. All right, so I got my iCharger X6 here. And it is currently charging at 8.6 amps or 116 watts. All right, so I got my standard test set up here. Many of you are familiar with this already. Uh, basically, I have my battery connected to a 12 volt inverter, and I'm using the shunt from a Batrium BMS as a metering device. Uh, this Android tablet shows voltage, amperage, wattage, amp hours, and watt hours discharged. And I'm plugging in a series of incandescent light bulbs as a resistive load. And for a 100 amp hour battery, we want to target 20 amps as a 0.2 C rate. Uh, so we'll leave this test run until the low voltage disconnected this battery shuts it down. Alright, so we just passed the 100 amp hour mark and we're still at 12.47 volts. This is looking pretty good. 105 amp hours and it's still going. Alright, and there we go. It shut down at 10.06 volts. 107.15 amp hours. This is exciting. This is one of the first times one of these batteries that I've tested on this channel has not only met its rated capacity, but it's actually exceeded its rated capacity. I'm very excited to open this up and see what cells are inside. All right, so there are screws the whole way around the lid of this. There's these little rubber inserts. Uh, and you can see the screws under there, so I just need to remove all of these inserts. These cables are kind of short. I'm not sure if we disconnect these terminals at the top here. So we can see that each red and black have two conductors going up to the main terminal. Uh, and they are 8 gauge, 200 degrees Celsius insulation silicone cable, standard silicone wire. And those were held to the terminal block with a standard bolt, a flat washer, and a split lock washer. And the positive is done the same way. We have four number eight silicone wires. Now I was hoping I'd be able to pull this battery module out, especially so we can get a look at the BMS, but uh, it's stuck in there pretty good. 
can see there's some silicone on the sides there, which I've largely broken free, both on the top and the bottom. But it must be attached at the bottom, probably more silicone or some sort of glue down there. But a close-up look of the cells here, you can see each balance lead coming off. Uh, they are soldered on, they are nicely bundled here. Uh, you got decent sized wires here. And each cell has a QR code intact, here's the QR code information. I'll have to see if I can find any information on these when I get back to the computer. The cells do appear to have threaded posts originally, you can see the original threads down in there. And then they laser welded these tabs on in between for connecting the series pair. And then for the main positive down here you can see where the wires come down to this bracket. And then they have two number 8 wires going to each lug. And the negative is done the same way with the laser welded bracket down to two lugs with two number 8 wires per lug. I can't really get a good shot of the BMS unfortunately because it is tucked down in there. I am able to pull it up and down because I broke free the silicone on each side but it's not going to clear this bracket here. So I think one thing I find most interesting about this setup is that there's no compression on these aluminum cased prismatic cells. There's no strap around them, there's nothing at all. In fact, they have them spaced approximately 3 to 4 millimeters apart. Uh, and there's no padding in between them, but there is some kind of yellow glue down in there. So I guess they anticipate these expanding a little bit under normal use. And you'll notice how the bus bars connecting the series connections kind of hump up a little bit. This is to allow for expansion between the cells, that way it reduces the stress being put on the terminals if these were to expand. So all in all, the build quality of this does appear to be superior. I have no complaints whatsoever. Uh, it's nicely done, it's all clean and organized. Of course, I can't see the BMS down there, but I can kind of get an idea of what it's like based on what I can see and the rest of the battery. Alright, so the battery is put back together. Just want to test it with the charger here, make sure it's taking a charge and that I did not damage anything inside. Alright, now we can see we are charging at 9.42 amps. Uh, so there is one more thing I want to test with this. We need to put it in the freezer and make sure the low temperature disconnect shuts it down and prevents charging below freezing. Alright, we've got a nice frosty battery that's been in the freezer for approximately 15 or so hours. So positive and negative. We are showing 12.18 volts. Let's try to charge it and see what happens. I don't know, it's charging. Oh, there we go. It, it took a second to shut down, but it did shut down. It did protect the battery from charging. Looks like it took about eight seconds, which is fine. So the under temperature disconnect protection does work on this line energy battery, which is great. All right, so this gets an A plus in my opinion. We finally have a battery that works as advertised. It met and exceeded the rated capacity. The build quality was fantastic. The low temperature disconnect works. The terminals are of adequate size. I have nothing bad to say about this battery. Now I did test it at a 0.2 C rate. I suppose if you test it at a higher discharge rate, you might see a little bit less, but I like to continue to use 0.2 C rate, so I have a basis for comparison across all the batteries that I test. This battery does sell for $999, brand new, but there will be a referral link in the description of this video if you choose to purchase one. That will take $150 off that price. I wanna thank Line Energy for sending this battery out to me for review. It's very much appreciated. If there are any other batteries on the market you guys would like to see me check out and test, please let me know as well. I do have one more coming up, probably in about two or three weeks or so. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you think. Hit that like button, and thanks for watching.